Uh, I was sent a copy of the novel before it was published um, from Sue Nagel, who was at Annapurna Pictures, and she was like, how would you feel about developing this with us? And I read it and kind of devoured it, which is actually what I did, but it sounds like I'm saying that as a weird pun for Night Bitch, but I devoured it and really loved the character's um, point of view and Rachel's take on narration. It was just such a unique voice inside of a novel and a unique narrative, and uh, that was the first thing that pulled me in. And then, of course, the subject matter and the way she portrayed mother, um, the, the relationship between mother and son and mother and husband, it just uh, it felt very identifiable to me. Well, I think with the book, it just, there was such an opportunity because it was so internal to like dive into expanding that and to kind of seeing how we place that inside of a film narrative. And, you know, when we're thinking about someone that we want to do this, Mari was like, that was, I was like, let's go to Mari. And of course she was like, everyone's like, no, Mari's not reading anything. She just had a baby. And I was like, I think she might have a very unique relationship with this. And it seemed like it was a great place, you know, uh, aside from that, I just love her talent with tone and her, her visual approach to storytelling. I just thought she would be such a great uh, fit with the magical realism. So we called Mari and, and we had a really long conversation and we were really, really um, blessed to get her on board. And really, I think the first, her first pass of the script that I read is what we shot. I mean, it was tight. She, she nailed it. Night Bitch is, um, it's about a lot of things. It's about motherhood, parenthood, relationships, communication. It deals with identity, transformation, but it follows um, mother through this period of her life where she finds herself alone and isolated with her toddler son, um, having to let go of her identity from the past and not yet finding a new identity. And she taps into sort of this feral uh, ancient mysticism to connect with her, her inner self and find herself in a new way. So Night Bitch, I like to, I'd like to say that Night Bitch is sort of the manifestation of mother's um, fear and frustration and confusion, um, dissatisfaction, lots of other things, just all sort of like boiling under the surface. And it's sort of this manifestation inside of her that starts to um, transform her into something more wild, more feral. Um, tap her back into play and connection and instinct. So, yeah, night bitch is instinct, I guess, yeah. Well, I think I had never seen um, motherhood and parenthood and relationships presented in this way. It just felt that there was an opportunity to show some authenticity that um, we don't often see, um, and a lot of duality inside of, um, you know, parenthood and, and motherhood, um, that you can have struggles and exhaustion and disappointment, but also have extreme joy and extreme love and extreme, um, I don't know, joy, really. And so it's that those two things can exist at the same time, and I really liked what the film had to say about that that we don't live in a, in a sort of singular space. Amy Adams Company and Annapurna first optioned the book Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder before it was published actually, and sent, sent me the manuscript. Um, and Amy sent it to me saying, I would love to work with you. I have no idea if this piques your interest, but I found this book very moving. Take a look and see what you think. And I read it and it was post pandemic. Um, during the pandemic, I was pregnant with my second child. I had moved out of the city to live in the woods. I was raising my two kids. My husband had gone back to work and I was sort of 
losing my mind with the isolation. And this book spoke to me on so many levels. I just felt so seen by it. It's like when you really see a piece of media that feels like it represents you, it just, it's like the most cathartic thing in the world. And I felt so moved by how my experience of motherhood felt so reflected in Rachel's writing and how she was able to just capture these, the real feeling of both the, the complexities of the feelings of the joy and love and the monotony and the boredom and the feeling that your brain is not your own and your body is not your own and you don't know if you'll ever be the same again. And so I just knew I had to adapt it. You know, I think there's some sometimes some misconceptions about the process of adaptation. It's never a one-to-one -one translation. You know, it's not just taking this one book and translating it into a movie. It's it's much more like how would you take a painting of something and turn it into a sculpture? It has to change forms and change mediums. And so a lot of that process for me, because I love adapting, is finding source material that I absolutely adore getting to know it so deeply that it almost feels inside of me and then letting it shift and grow into something new that has a different form, that takes a different timing, that has a different shape. Um, you know, like something in her book where she would constantly describe many days that went on and on that had similarities, I created into a montage where we're, we're having these percussive elements and there's hash browns and um, going to the park and a swing and a this and a that. It's like physicalizing this idea and this concept and finding ways to make that physical as well as just the overall shape of the story. So it's a tough process. Sometimes it means letting go of parts of the book that you might have loved, you know, parts of the book I loved because you can't keep everything and um, letting it grow into something new. You know, when we were thinking about the transformation in the movie, we kept looking to other movies and transformations and realizing that in most kind of body horror transformation movies, the transformation is very painful. It's like a like ripping open or like something poking out of you or like your skin being torn off and it feels awful. And I realized this transformation needed to feel good. It needed to feel exuberant and like a catharsis and like everything is finally coming to fruition. And it had a bit of an ecstasy to it. So it was how do we change this trajectory so that it feels good? The unlock for me was realizing that we could, I I chose this, this idea that she's digging in her garden. It felt like it made sense for the story. She's sort of been excavating and digging through her past and her own mother and her grandmother and thinking through her past life as an artist. She's sort of digging through her past to try and understand who she is currently. And at the same time, she's physically digging in her lawn. And that led me to how to build the transformation sequences out of that digging. You know, Amy is one of the best actors working. I think she is just, she's got a timeless quality. She is so emotionally tapped in. I keep thinking about the fact that right before this, I think the movie she filmed right before this was Disenchanted and when she came to this movie. If you, I mean, talk about a range. It's like she can sing, she can dance, she can be a Disney princess and she can do this very raw, very intimate, very vulnerable work that I asked her to do in this movie. And she sort of moves between those two worlds so seamlessly, it's pretty incredible to witness. Absolutely. I mean, so much of what I brought to the script was bringing my own stories of my own mothering journey and my friend's mothering journeys to the story. And Amy and I talk so much about how we both feel and have felt particularly in the first years of mothering. Um, and those came to came to the story in so many different ways. Also, so much of the story is about long term relationships and what it is to be in a long term relationship, no matter whether you have kids or not. Um, and the ways in which you can fall into ruts and roles and a division of labor that can feel unfair without you even realizing it. One person's career becomes more important than the other person's. You might move for that person or whatever it might be. And realizing that you can kind of wake up and go, wait, how did we get here? How is this? Did we make choices that led us here? Or did we just end up here? And then trying to reset and consciously make choices about how you want your relationship to work. 
So we talked a lot about that too, about what it is to be in a long-term relationship, whether it's a heterosexual, homosexual relationship, whatever it might be, that to kind of be able to redefine your roles throughout your relationship is I think the key to long-term success. You know, I think some of my favorite responses are when people say, I'm not a mother or I don't have kids yet, but this movie made me think about my mom and I called her right afterwards. Or um, I think there is an invisible labor to motherhood, particularly that we don't really talk about or acknowledge often. There's often sacrifices that go along with being a mom. You know, I know there are choices I've made along my path as a director that I wouldn't have made if I wasn't a mom, good and bad. And pretty much we all spend our time <laughs> as moms. It's a pretty thankless job, but feeling seen is really meaningful. So I'm hoping this makes people feel seen.